anticipated midseason battle. Season and we're on a high note as you look down at Pro Players Stadium, the home of the Dolphins, as they entertain the Dallas Cowboys in this much anticipated battle. This has been talked about since last April when the schedule first came out. Jimmy Johnson, in fact, the Dolphin coach said, I put a circle around October the 27th. Everybody's been looking forward to this. Jimmy. Jerry, Barry, what kind of reception will they get? Here is what happened when Jimmy Johnson came out. And then when Jerry Jones came out, followed by microphones, cameras, print media, everybody. The Valley who has really been what we expected it to be. But would they speak to each other, Jimmy and Jerry? First, Jerry okay. arrived and talked yeah. to the owner, yeah, Wayne Huizenga of the Dolphins. And then he and Jimmy Johnson touched hands so that much is over. They did shake hands, but it was only a touch. I'm Pat Summerall here with John Madden. And John, what about all the Ballyhoo? Are you glad it's over? I'm just glad that part of the Ballyhoo is over. I mean, it has nothing to do, and that's all they've been talking about is Jimmy and Jerry, and Jimmy and Jerry aren't going to play. I mean, their, their time, they had that in the pregame show. They had that in the pregame, but from now on, it's going to be about players. And I think the ironic thing was when you had all those cameramen and those photographers flopping all over each other when those two came out, Two of the great players walked out in the field unnoticed. Dan unnoticed. Marino and Troy Aikman, and that's what the game's going to be about. And what Dan Marino brings to this Dolphin team is almost indescribable. Well, you know, that's what we were talking to Jimmy Johnson about. He said when, when he came here, and he knew Dan Marino was a great quarterback, one of the all-time great quarterbacks, he said, but he didn't know the impact that he had on this team. And he said he not only has the impact, you know, you know, on the offense, he gets in the huddle and he calls the plays, and it's a different offense, but also the defense, the special teams, this entire team is really about Dan Marino. What is the state of the Dallas Cowboys? They're the world champions. Are they now? Well, no. I mean, they haven't played like the world champions since the last Super Bowl and they need more consistency. I think their offense needs some big plays. I think their defense is going to get a big lift today because they get Charles Haley back. And with a quarterback like Dan Marino, you need the extra pass rush that they'll get from Haley. Mark Tune says he's going to give it a try. He's been out of practice almost all week. But the stage is set and we'll be back with today's game between the Dolphins and the Cowboys in a moment. As you would expect, a packed house as the Cowboys get ready to face the Dolphins. Miami's won the toss. They'll be on offense first, and we'll have a look at Dan Marino and the effect that John Madden was talking about a minute ago, what he does for this Miami, Miami offensive unit. This is his 191st game with the Dolphins. That is a new team record. The old one had been shared, Marino and Bob Kuchenberg, but now Marino, who is Mr. Dolphin, holds it by himself. Jarris McPhail and Irving Spikes will be back deep for the Dolphins. Chris Bonio will kick it off. There is a swirling wind. I was talking with Troy Aikman down on the field just before the game began. And he was saying it's an unpredictable wind. You can't tell which way it's blowing. Temperature 80 degrees, humidity 70 percent, muggy, wind 16 to 25 miles an hour. It's going to be a factor. Partly cloudy, the forecast. And here comes Bonio. Good kick. Irving spikes at about the two. Spikes at the 26, 27. Let's look at Miami's offense right now. Led by Dan Marino. He's missed four weeks. His offensive line, Richmond Webb, Keith Sims on the left, Chris Gray, James Brown on the right, Tim Ruddy is the center. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Stanley Pritchett, Randall Hill, McDuffie, and Brett Carolyn starting at tight end. Not a strong blocker, but a good pass receiver. Marino. Let's 
look at the Dallas defense. Charles Haley did start. Not involved in the first tackle. Leon Lett next to him. Chad Hennings and Tony Tolbert having a great year. Darren Smith, Fred Strickland in the middle, and Broderick Thomas. Two of the best cornerbacks in pro football, Sanders and Kevin Smith. Woodson and Marion, the two safeties. I think the Dolphins are going to stay away from new, those two corners and try and work on the safeties with slot receivers today. Marino. Deflected. Intended for Pritchett. Deflected by Tolbert. You know, there's a guy who's having a heck of a oh, year yeah. for the Cowboys. Is Tony Tolbert. He had both knees scoped in the offseason. They went in there and cleaned them out. And last season, he kind of limped through the whole year. But he is a different player this year. And you just watch as a as a pass rusher on these quick little passes. You want to get as much push as you can, then get in the lane between the quarterback and the receiver. And Tony Tolbert was perfect on that play. As quick as Marino is in his release of the ball, you're not going to get many sacks. Four wide receivers this time. Marino. Pass sails high over the head of Randall Hill incomplete. Yep, and the guy that hit him was Charles Haley. Yeah, I, I, I think when you talk about just pure pass rushers, Charles Haley is as good as there is in this game. He came on a stunt that time where Leon Lett worked to the outside and he came under it. He, he hit Dan Marino just as he threw the ball. So Dan Marino knows Charles Haley's playing today. The veteran John Kidd back to punt. Kelvin Martin deep for Dallas. Fine drive for Kidd. Martin has it bounce away. Finally juggles and picks it up. And Kelvin Martin out of bounds at about the 30. And the Dallas offensive unit strolls onto the field. Number eight, Troy Eggman, the quarterback. Completed almost 61% of his passes this year. In front of him, that veteran and very, very good offensive line. Two and eight will give it a try. Newton, Donaldson, Allen, and Eric Williams. Emmett Smith and Daryl Johnson, the two running backs. Deion Sanders, Michael Irvin wide. And the tight end is Jornson. How'd you like to beat Deion Sanders today playing both ways in this weather? It is very warm and humid. Aikman pump fake. Michael Irvin. Flag on the play. Irvin in his dance, but there's a penalty marker down. Well, you know, this is a homecoming for Michael Irvin. Of course, he went to the University of Miami. This is the first time that he's been back here and played since then. Not the first time he's been back here, but it's the first time he's been back here playing. Holding 27 defense. It's the clock. Holding against first Buckley. Down. And that was Buckley here, and he's he's playing man-to-man -man on Michael Irvin. Terrell Buckley, see, he gives him a cushion. Then he holds there a little as Michael Irvin gives him that out. Then as Michael Irvin goes up, Terrell Buckley grabbed the left eight on his back of his jersey. Pump fake set that up. The pump fake and the out move at the right. same time, simultaneously. Emmett Smith flashes into the Dolphins secondary down to about the 30. Another homecoming in the person of Emmett Smith. Let's look at the Miami defense. The ends, ex-Cowboy Daniel Stubbs and Trace Armstrong. In the middle, Gardner and Bowens. Singleton and Hollier outside. The rookie, Zach Thomas, in the middle. Jackson, Wooden, Oliver, and Buckley, the secondary. And they all love number 54, Zach Thomas, down here in Miami. Second down, Emmett Smith again. First down at the Dolphin 20. Singleton made the stop. Even Nate Newton was telling us about Zach Thomas. He's a rookie middle linebacker for the Dolphins. He said, he said the guy's only, you know, he's only like 5'10, 220 pounds. But he said he's just a football player. And you know, I mean you hit him, you knock him around, you knock him down. He doesn't even react at it. He said he doesn't look, he doesn't do anything. Here he is, he's leading this team in tackles, a rookie out of Texas Tech, undersized. But I'll tell you, he's a, he, he's a guy that if the Cowboys are going to run, they have to get him blocked. Very intelligent. Here's Aikman. Wheels it outside. Dennis Smith, there's a flag on the play.
against Dallas. It's a great drive stop for the momentum stopper because the, the, the Cowboys did come out with a little sense of urgency. Remember last week against Atlanta, you could feel that in the third quarter. They're starting the game that way. Illegal hands to the face. 79. Offense. Still first down. Welcome to Pro Player Stadium in Miami, the home of the Dolphins. Those of you that watched Philadelphia defeat Carolina 20 to 9. The Eagles playing well. They play Dallas next week. Nothing, nothing here. But the Cowboys on the move at the Dolphin 30. It's 30, first and 20. That last penalty was against right tackle Eric Williams. Calvin Martin replaced Sanders. Aikman fires Dave and he makes a remarkable catch. Comes down with it. That's who Troy Aikman was telling us last night that he's going to work on. I think I think he's going to work on anyone that Michael Irvin is. Here's Michael Irvin, and here's Calvin Jackson back here. That was a guy that Troy Aikman was saying that they'd like to work on is Calvin Jackson. And if you give that big a cushion and you react to that, you can throw that out or come back all day to Michael Irvin, Deion Sanders, Calvin Martin, anyone you put out there, you can get that on these corners the way they're playing. Especially if your receiver can make a catch like that. Second down. Oop. Artuane move. Artuane got in a blocking position uh, on one and the ball was snapped on two. At least he made a healthy move. You know, we, when we were talking to Aikman last night, he was saying, you know, you know, what do you consider a guy open? And he said, when it's Michael Irvin, he said one-on-one. -on -one. Anytime I get single coverage, I'm going to him. He's open. Mark Tuane, there was some doubt about whether or not he'd be able to show up and play, but he has played every play so far. Here's Aikman. This is to Deion Sanders, who is out of bounds. Uh, homecoming for Deion Sanders as well as Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin. That's what I was saying. But see, they can work on that Calvin Jackson as long as as long as those corners play off like that. No matter what receiver they put out there, they can run those outs because they're giving them that. I mean, the corners are often given the cushion, and they have no underneath help coming out there. Remember the opening night on Monday night when the Bears beat them? They gave them that big cushion. And Jimmy Johnson said yesterday when we talked with him that they'd give him that. And, and of course, Dave Wanstad, coach for the Chicago yeah. Bears, and you know, who used to coach with Jimmy. I'm sure that's what they talked about. Outside him and Smith. Left the Dolphin standing. Finally, he went to his knees. Zach Thomas knocked Emmett Smith out of bounds, but the first man to miss. Left with, with a handful of nothing. Yeah, that was Chris Singleton. You'll see him, number 55. And that's what Emmett Smith has to do. If you're going to catch a swing pass here, you have to make that first guy miss. Now, if you're a Miami Dolphin, you have to tackle Emmett Smith right there because he got seven more yards because of that missed tackle. And a first down. So it's first and goal. Two tight ends. Smith, who tried to cut it back, got perhaps a yard. Stopped by Bowen. Jimmy Johnson, two Super Bowl rings in Dallas. You know, and he was saying yesterday that I mean, he has so much respect for these Cowboys, of course, that he coached, and he said that the thing that we have to do is we have to tackle Emmett Smith, and we have to tackle Michael Irvin. And of course, on this first drive, they haven't had a lot of success. They tackled Michael Irvin, they haven't covered him well, and they haven't tackled Emmett Smith well. Second and goal at the seven, Emmett Smith again. Emmett's tripped up for a loss this time by Calvin Jackson. Well, they, tack they, they, they tackled him well that way, and that was Calvin Jackson. He was a guy that Michael Irvin had kept the, uh, caught the out on, and that, that Deion Sanders had caught the out on. He said, well, you caught two passes on me out here, but I'm going to come up and make that tackle. And this is what a guy has to do when, when, when he's in support. You see, the ball is out there, and now he has to come up to the outside. See him come up to the outside? That's, that's force. You get up to the outside, force anything back to the inside, or if it stays out there, you tackle it. Third and goal at the nine. Well, Daryl Johnston in motion, but flags come up from everywhere. Ball start, 79, offense. 
That's the second penalty on Eric Williams. It looked like Trace Armstrong jumped, but it was Eric Williams. He's the right tackle. He's going to be right here. They call it on him for moving. You see, he's not in a three-point stance. He's already up, so he can't rock at all. You see him start to rock there, starts to rock back. That brings Trace Armstrong here, but it was brought about by Eric Williams starting to just creep back a little. Third and goal. Back at the 14-yard line. 15, maybe. Aikman. Incomplete. And the Dolphins stop him. Good coverage that time by Terrell Buckley. Michael Irvin was trying to run that same out. Terrell Buckley took the out away from him. And Michael Irvin couldn't get out. That time he didn't give him the cushion. He couldn't give him the cushion because he had an end zone back there. So Chris Bonio, 10 out of 14 with a long of 52 yards, has had one block this year. This will be from 33 yards with the punter John Jett Holder. Bonio's good. The Cowboys put numbers on the board first. Three nothing Dallas lead. And I think both teams will probably feel pretty good about that. You can see Jerry Jones up there getting his first drink of soda. And, and 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 Barry Switzer on the sideline and you know that that they got a good drive you know they were able to run the ball and throw the ball and then on Jimmy Johnson's side I think you have to feel good that they really brought their bus stuff they were executing well but we were able to hold them to a field goal. Dallas scoring drive 10 plays 55 yards they kept the ball six minutes six seconds Bonio's 33 yard field goal put him on the scoreboard Derek Williams had two penalties called on him in that opening drive yeah he had that uh, holding penalty and then then he had that one where he started to move and again that's that's tough that movement one is tough because it's hard to hear when you're a tackle it's hard to hear the start count when you're playing on the road like this in a big game like this with this crowd and you know you know and they know they know that you have to pass and they know when they see you in that two points you know and they start that noise and Eric Williams just didn't hear the snap count I'd like to welcome those of you who saw the 49ers at Houston by a point. Welcome to Pro Player Stadium in Miami, the home of, home of the Dolphins. It's 3 0 Dallas here. Irving spikes out to about the 29, where the Dolphins will take over. The Dolphins were three and out on their first possession. The Cowboys drove it down and got a field goal by Chris Bonio to take the lead 3 0. You know, Dan Marino is wearing a special brace on his right ankle. You know, he. He had he injured his ankle four games ago had surgery they put a screw in the ankle and then they made a special brace for that right ankle then they had to get a special shoe made you see here's the brace that he wears now once you get that and that holds the ankle and they cock it in here the way they want it then they needed a special shoe made that would fit the brace. And I watched him practice on it on, on Friday, and he looked very comfortable with his rig on. It's a funny-looking thing. Here's Marino. Pass caught by O.J. McDuffie. And the Dolphins get a first down. Yeah, that's what Marino can do. I mean, he's just a thing of beauty. I, I just watch him, and I'm just mesmerized the way he throws the ball. I mean, you're going to see O.J. McDuffie. He starts in motion to the inside. Then he comes up. Then he runs it out. And that ball is right there. That's a good move that McDuffie made, too. Yeah, he, he, he kind of made a fake with his motion. But that throw by Marino, I mean, he just has a gun. That, that, that ball, when he sees something, from the time he sees it until the ball gets here is a very short time. First down. Abdul Jabbar gets a couple over the right side, maybe, maybe four. Three nothing Dallas over Miami. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, one of the five rookies that are starting for this Miami team, and and he really has a good feel. He's in. In fact, Jimmy Johnson was saying he he's a lot like Emmett Smith in that 
he can feel the crease. You know, doesn't have great speed, isn't going to outrun a lot of people, but can feel a crease or an opening and always hit that crease or opening. Second and five, he sees a lot. Marino fakes, he comes to blitz, Marino goes down. He's got a flag on the play as Broderick Thomas and Darren Smith met at Marino. Those of you who watched the Giants beat Detroit 35 to 7, welcome to Pro Player Stadium in Miami, where the Cowboys lead the Dolphins 3 0. 33 yard field goal by Chris Boniel. Johnny Greer is the referee. Intentional grounding. Oh, with Dan Marino saying that he had a receiver there, he does get to blitz. You see, he's going to have two linebackers coming on him right here, and he's saying that he he sh he threw it to the halfback. That there was a back over here on this left side, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You see, here's Jabbar right there, he and that's there. who he was throwing the screen pass to. And there. Dan Marino was right. That was the play, and it was the screen pass. And that's what Jimmy Johnson's yelling about. Jimmy's right. Because they faked the fullback to the right, they brought Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to the left, and they wanted to bring the rush and then just throw it over him. That was not intentional grounding. I don't think Jimmy's pleased. He shouldn't be pleased. He should not. Three wide receivers. Here comes the blitz again. Marino gets it outside and complete. Deion Sanders. All right, now. For a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown in our Fox Television Center. In Baltimore, all tied at 31. Rich Brooks of the Rams trying to call timeout before Matt Stover attempts his 32-yard win. Game attempt winner did not get it. We go into overtime, tied at 31. Back to Pat and John. It's 3-0. Dolphins back to punt it. Kelvin Martin. Deep retreats to the 10-yard line. Martin is hit and knocked backwards at about the 21, where the Cowboys will take over. Dallas leading 3-0. We're in the first quarter at Pro Player Stadium. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. By Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by Dockers Khakis. Hey, nice pants. We're back in Miami. Pro Players Stadium. Packed. And has been for months. Ever since this game was on the schedule. Back in April. There have been no tickets available. Emmett Smith. Crumpled after about three yards by Tim Bowens. You know, you know, as we went away there, they were still complaining about that screen pass, and, and Jimmy Johnson was still complaining to referee Johnny Greer that that, that wasn't intentional grounding. And, and Jimmy was talking to Johnny Greer during the whole time. <laughs> there he is still arguing about that. That was a play that we called, and that was a way we called that play. That was a bad call you made. Here's Aikman. Fox it out to Michael Irvin, taken out of bounds. 40, that's a well first down, Sean Wooden. You know, both of these Miami Dolphin corners are, are undersized. They're only five feet nine, so, so they're going to get beaten that way. And then, as long as they stay off like this, and they're, and they're playing so deep, they're giving all this. And as we said earlier, any time that there's anyone man-to-man -man on, on Michael Irvin, Troy Aikman says that's considering him open, so he's going to throw it to him. But I think I think they got to get up somewhere and jam these guys so they're going to kill him. Aikman to throw again. Pops it out to Emmett Smith. Breaks a tackle. Emmett Smith across midfield. Out of bounds at the Dolphin 45. Zach Thomas came over to chase him out of bounds. 
And that time it was Dwight Hollier who missed him. You know, again, you're going to get those things. This is excellent pass protection. If you watch his pass protection, they really give a lot of time to Troy Aikman because he's trying to go deep. You see him look deep to the right, deep to the middle, pump, wait, wait, wait. Then he doesn't have any more time. Now he comes out to Emmett Smith. But Dwight Hollier has to make that tackle. And that was what Jimmy Johnson was telling us yesterday. We have to tackle Emmett Smith, and they haven't done it so far. Here's Emmett again. Emmett Smith inside the Dolphin 40 to about the 38. Deion Sanders getting a rest. That pass completion two, two plays ago had Sanders and Urban on the same side with Urban in the slot. Right, and they were trying to go deep, and again, he had time, but it was good deep coverage. I mean, that's what that's what Miami's doing. They're not going to let him get a deep one, but I think you can catch things in front of him all day and move down the field, and that's where Ernie Zampezi and Troy Aikman have to be a little patient, and look at how far these corners off, and take that. Here's Emmett again. Hit after he picked up a yard, maybe. That's Calvin Jackson coming up again. One one thing, they're having a lot more success throwing at number 38, Calvin Jackson, than they are running at him. Because every time they they run at him, he's he's come up and made the tackle. You, you can see that this weather's starting to get to these guys. And we saw, we saw a shot of Deion Sanders earlier. He ran a deep pattern, and he was out there getting some oxygen. Emmett Smith runs a couple. Now he's out of there. So Sherman Williams is the deep back. Darrell Johnston on the move. And Aikman back to throw. Wheels it out to Deion Sanders. Stopped by Calvin Jackson again underneath. You know, again, they can do this, they can do this all day, and that's exactly what they're doing. See how far the corner is off here? All you have to do is come up and throw anything in this area here because no one is getting out to that side, and you can just drive him off. But look at this area here, and that's been open this whole game and is going to continue. See, the big cushion with no one coming underneath or from the inside to help underneath. About a 10-yard cushion. That's like, like taking Halloween candy on trick-or-treat. Side inside the 20 to about the 18, stopped by Sean Wood. And if you just look at where they're working because of these corners playing off so far, four for four to the right, three for four, I mean, I mean four for four to the left, three for four to the right. They haven't done anything in the middle, and again, not beating something to death, but with those corners being so far off, there is no reason to do anything other than to work either side, right or left. Aikman is seven out of eight, second and five, two tight ends. Aikman back to throw it again. to 10 and that's that same pattern in that yep. same area it's the same thing again again with this with this offensive line and with the way they're playing and with Michael Irvin again the same thing it's going to be right here in this area that you're going to hit and you see it's it's part of the guy playing off plus a linebacker not working out there underneath and this is just like playing catch yeah. with Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin. That time Terrell Buckley went over to that side. Sherman Williams. Ernie Zampezi's calling a good game. You know, I know that you know they talk about they ought to run more and they ought to do this, but when you have when you're when your offensive line has control of the pass rush. And you're getting soft corners and stuff open all day. There's no reason to run a lot. And look what the Cowboys are averaging on first down. 10.8 yards a play. That's a pretty good formula. Yeah. <laughs> all you have is first down. Yeah. Dallas has run nine times. Thrown it nine times. Emmett Smith back in the game. He goes in motion. Aikman looking right. Then fires left. Deep in the corner in the direction of Darrell Johnston. Incomplete. He was trying to throw the ball over here to the right to Deion Sanders and Emmett Smith in this area. Think you could thread that needle? No, but that's 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 an old lineman. I mean, I, I mean that's that's kind of stuff you do to offensive linemen. I mean, you you, you just.
take a needle and, and, and you don't take thread, the, the shoestring becomes a thread. Hey, yeah. A shoestring is industrial size thread. That's all it is. That's one thing about football that's never changed. Yep. <laughs> that's right. The old shoestring to hold your gear together. Always keep your gear together. <laughs> as they call it, because he had plenty of time. It sure was, but if, if Eric Williams would have given one more shot on Trace Armstrong, he wouldn't have got there. Because it was Trace Armstrong coming around Eric Williams, and if he would have given him one more shot, he wouldn't have been able to get there. At the end of one, Dallas leads Miami 3-0. Ready to start the second quarter, Dallas leading Miami 3-0. Chris Pognol, who hit one from 33 yards already, in to try another one, has made his last 17 in a row from inside the 30. In the first quarter, Dallas had the ball 12 minutes, Miami just three. And I think I think you see a little frustration over there in Barry Switzer's face, and knowing that you know, we've done everything and we're only ahead three to nothing. Eric Williams has had some problems. He had two penalties, and then he was beaten on that last sack by Trace Armstrong. 29 yards. Bonio will try again. And he hits again. And Dallas now leads six to nothing. First play of the second quarter. Barry Switzer. In the confrontations between Jerry and Jimmy, Barry's sort of been left out. I think he's happy about that. First quarter statistics. Cowboys own all those as well as the time of possession on the bottom. Look at this. They've had eight first downs. The Dolphins have only had one first down, and that's because the Cowboys have had the ball 12 minutes, and the Dolphins so far have only had it three minutes. But I'll tell you, you know, as you were just saying, that could come back to haunt them yeah. because the, the Cowboys have, have done everything on offense and only have six points. Miami hasn't even started yet. And Bill Bates, who broke his thumb last week, still playing on special teams, with a big cast on his right hand. And that's because he's Bill Bates. Bill Bates, a thumb isn't going to keep Bill Bates out of some contact. A high kickoff fielded by Jarris McPhail, who's the fastest man on the Dolphins team. And he gets it out to about the 27, where the Dolphins will take over, stopped by Kavika Pittman. So, the opening moments of quarter number two and Dallas leading Miami 6 0. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Dallas 6, Miami nothing. Watch, watch this, Pat. Here's Bill Bates. Now, he has a cast on his hand. Now, when you tap a guy in the head <laughs> with a cast, that's a little different than a tap. That's Larry Izzo, the guy that he tapped, the special teams guy of the Dolphins. The, the other rookie, he tapped him darn near knocked him out. That was a little bit more than a tap. <laughs> well, I know, I mean, it, but it was, it was passed off. I mean, that's, that's Bates. Remember when Bates was in grammar school, they called him Bully Billy Bates. They're still working on this guy. Well, that's that thread, threading up his gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw him get another, another shoestring ready. The shoelace. <laughs> Sometimes your stuff just starts falling apart. Sometimes it gets knocked off. If you're tapped by Bates. That's Irving Spice. Outside the 30, about the 31, stopped by Tony Tolbert. I'll tell you who else come in there and made a, a, a stop was Brock Marion. He, he finished that thing off. You could hear his shot there at the end all the way from up here. You know, one thing, you know, Deion Sanders doesn't even go into the huddle. And then because he doesn't, Kevin Smith on the other side don't go into the huddle. So the Dallas defense usually has nine-man huddles. Spikes again. Out to about the 35, short of a first down. They'll still need a couple. If you just watch Dion there, Pat, he just starts walking out yep. to the sideline. He's not gonna, he's not even gonna come any place close to the huddle. Well, they both do it. 
Yeah. Kevin Smith then, on the other side. And then just stands right out there. And, you know, when you're playing both ways, it's to conserve your energy. And then Kevin Smith said, if Dion doesn't have to get in the huddle, I don't either. So they stand out in their respective corners, and the guys go to the huddle and then come out and tell them what the call is. Four wide receivers for the Dolphins this time. Marino fires complete. Joe J. McDuffie. And that's enough for a Dolphin first down. You see, Darren Woodson got up and he said, how in the heck did he get that ball in there? But that's Dan Marino. Yeah. I mean, he just got that and he, he just zips in. Watch, he loves a shotgun because he can get back away from the rush a little. But when he decides, you see right there, he decides. I mean, Darren Woodson had good coverage on yep. McDuffie. And watch him come up there and that thing and just boom, and just zip that ball right in there. <laughs> now that is about as tight as you can get it. And he's throwing it away from Darren Woodson where only McDuffie can get it. Marino drops it outside the spikes. Spikes bent quickly. This is going to be a loss of one or two by Broderick Thomas first. There's a guy who's playing a lot better the last couple weeks for the Cowboys. Remember last week against Atlanta, he really didn't play any linebacker. He just played defensive end and was a good pass rusher. That time there, he just made a good open field tackle. Charles Haley getting a rest now. Shante Carver has replaced him at defensive right end, second and 11. I think they're probably, you know how they do in baseball, count the number of pitches a pitcher throws. I think they're counting the number of plays that Haley's going to play. Marino. Pass is complete to Pritchett. Picked up by six. And then with Haley out of there, here's what you have to do. You say, where's Leon Lett? They're going to double Leon Lett. I mean, you get your, your center. He starts, he keeps his, his hand out there. And then, and, and then the guard just takes him. The guard, Keith Sims, did a good job on him that time. But by short setting him, not letting Leon Lett get started. He got a little help from the center. And then he just short set it or stayed right there on the line of scrimmage. Four wide receivers again, third and three. Shotgun, which is pretty much his choice when he stays in that. Or when he sets up in that. As it's caught by Jordan. Jordan down to the Dallas 20. Yeah, that was one of those zone blitzes. Leon let dropped out, and 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 Dan Marino threw it right by his ear. He threw it right in his own. Here's Leon Lett. He goes back there to make a zone out of it, and you get the slant from the inside. And watch Marino. He just throws it right in here. Here's Leon Lett dropping right here, and he throws it right by Leon Lett, right into this area here for a big play. A gain of 38 yards, first down, Dolphins at the Dallas 16. But Cowboys leading 6-0. He is something. Marino to throw it again. Touchdown to Stanley Pritchett. Marino hit him perfectly. And I think that's why Barry Switzer looked worried earlier that they were doing everything right. They only got six points. Dan Marino comes down the field. Boom, boom, boom. And if they score and make the extra point here, they're going to have the lead. And up until this point, the Cowboys have beaten the Miami Dolphins every way you can. But this is a Marino factor at work. This is Dan Marino. He comes back. He sees the whole field and has a great arm and a great zip. He just sees Pritchard Perfect. right there, man to man, man to man on Thomas, and he just lays it into him. Perfectly. Met me for the extra point, which is good, and the Dolphins take the lead, seven to six. Marino was four out of four on that drive. The touchdown pass to Pritchard, and it's perfect. Seven six, Miami lead. Yeah, I think we just saw the impact that Dan Marino has on this Dolphin team. Again, they had nothing going all day. The Cowboys were moving the ball. They hadn't had but one first down, and then he gets hot. Boom, boom, boom. Four passes and a touchdown. Herschel Walker. Return to kick off to about the 21. Stopped by Jarris McPhail. 7-6. The Miami Dolphins lead Dallas. We're in the second quarter. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately?
by Miller Lite, American Light Lager gold medal winner at the 1996 World Beer Cup, and by Castro, official motor oil sponsor of the NFL. Back in Miami at Pro Player Stadium, the home of the Dolphins. You know, seagulls have a pretty good life, don't they? They always live at the beach. I mean, every time you see, like, seagulls, you see a beach in water. It Deep seems like uh, most of the time the sun's shining, it's warm. It's a good deal. Yeah. They're scavengers. And that's Smith for a couple. Earlier we were talking that, that, that Barry Switzer looked a little frustrated there, and I think you could see the frustration here is, again, is they have a lot of plays, and they had a lot of yardage, but this year isn't so good. You know, that with all those plays and all those yards, they only have six points, and then again, Marino, with four completed passes, has seven points. And the Dolphins lead the Cowboys. Second and nine. Aikman back to draw. Irvin. That'll be enough for first down. And now for McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. Pat, what an outstanding story Terry Allen and the Redskins are. Allen, one of his three touchdown runs on the day. Terry Allen now with 13 on the season. Redskins, 7-1, and one best start since their Super Bowl year of 91. Back to Pat and John. Well, the Redskins have surprised a lot of people, I think, including us. You know, one surprise or one thing that is not a surprise to me, though, is the job that North Turner's done. Here's Deion Sanders. A flag on the play. Deion did a little dance. And let's see what Johnny Greer has to say. I mean, I like that dance. Well, you know, they're just, it's the same thing, Pat. They're just taking advantage of those corners being off and just throwing stuff in front of them. And again, that's something they can do all day. Aikman up talking to Johnny Greer. Michael Irvin already has five catches today. And the way they're playing him, he can have 20. Pass interference, 48, offense. Still first down. Call against Darrell Johnston, the moose, who wasn't even involved in the play. That happens a lot of times. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll start, a guy will start to hit or hold up an offensive guy, then the offensive guy will hit him or push him back. First and 20, 8.45 left to play in the first half, 7-6, Dolphin. Well, the scene outside the stadium on the way here, people, I need tickets. This one's been sold out a long time. That's to Darren Johnson, who breaks one tackle. Gets out to about the 36-yard line, stopped by Singleton. You know, one thing I noticed about this Miami defense, they're not tackling well. I mean, they, they didn't they didn't tackle well against Emmett Smith. You're gonna see here they just they miss a lot of open field tackles. Now, now here's Troy Aikman. He's looking to the left, looking to the right, comes back to Moose Johnston over the middle. Zach Thomas missed him right there. And you see how many yards a guy gets after a missed tackle. Those are all free yards. Darrell Johnson just broke that tackle by. Zach Thomas, well, that attempt. Here's Aikman back to throw again. Emmett Smith. And he makes a man miss. Zach Thomas again. And that's the thing that Zach Thomas does so well yeah. is tackle, and he just missed Moose Johnston to play before that, and then he misses Emmett Smith here, and he's thinking, this is an indoctrination into this game. <laughs> this is a different league. You look at what the Cowboys have done. This is the place to go. Seven out of eight for the wide receivers. And then if you have to dump it off, four out of five to the backs. But I think those eight attempts to the wide receivers is really the Dallas Cowboy game plan. Work your wide receivers on their corners. Irvin's right, Sanders left. Aiken gets it under to Sanders. Sanders will have a Dallas first down. Brown made the stop. Yeah, the, the Miami Dolphins are even changing corners. Now it's J.B. Brown, but again, they're playing the same way. I mean, they're just playing off. Here they got to Troy Aikman just as he throws it. You see him get rid of the ball. 
That was Daniel Stubbs that got him. But he was able to get rid of that ball and again throw the out because whoever the corner is, he's playing that same thing, and they could get that out there all day. Dion gets a rest. First and ten Dallas. Johnson on the move. The handoff is to Emmett. And Smith gets close to midfield. Emmett Smith is looking a little better. I thought I I I thought that last week he started to look more like himself, and today he Even looks more. he looks the best that I have seen him all year. You know, he's been banged up since training camp, the preseason game against the Denver Broncos. Right. He hurt his knee and then it was his ankle and his ribs and his neck and his back. And I never felt that, that he ever got well. But today he looks close. I think coming back to Florida has a little to do with it, too. Second and six. Pass dropped by Urban. Incomplete. That's one way to stop him. Today's overhead shots are courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, which is based in Pompano Beach, just north of here. At the controls today is Captain Dick Ash. What a sight this is. Yeah, they got another good life, blimps. Yeah. They always get to go to games and watch everything. I think I think if you come back in another life, I'd like to be either a blimp or a seagull. Well, again, it's usually clear and warm <laughs> when they're around. I, I think you don't want to be right. Calvin Martin lost the ball, the pass incomplete as Martin was really popped as he made the reception. And that's what you have to do if you're going to play this kind of defense where you're going to play off like that, then when the ball is thrown, you have to converge. He and that's what joke. they did on this play. Here's Kelvin Martin. He, you're going to see him come up and just come under control, catch that hook there, and then really come in and unload on him. Terrell Buckley was Whoa. the first guy. I don't know that that wasn't that was awfully close to a fumble. It certainly was. He almost made the catch. O.J. McDuffie back deep for the Dolphins. John Jett to punt it. Good high kick. McDuffie will let it bounce. Into the end zone. We'll bring it back to the 20. Jett didn't get the bounce he wanted. So he just holds his head. 7-6 Miami. This is why when you're covering a punt, you never look up in the air. You always look downfield where the ball is. Because when you look up in the air, you don't see this. And when you look at it and then look up again, and that unloads you, on the, it knocks you right out of the screen. And it the is, next uh, thing, you're over there in the sideline with some smelling salt. In a cool breeze, you hope. Boy, did Billy Davis wonder but he looked like he looked up yeah. then he looked and saw McDuffie then he looked up again and then McDuffie unloaded on him. I don't think he thought McDuffie was going to block. Obviously he didn't think so. Yeah he didn't want any guy as a starting receiver yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't block like that on punt return. Tough game. To bar to the 30. Most to a Dolphin first down. Right now. Let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. At 10, March of Rota and the Ravens pull it out in overtime. Vinny Testaverde decides to go for it because Stover, their field goal kicker, had missed two field goals and a PAT. They find Michael Jackson and up in St. Louis, 31 by 37, 31. Back to Pat and John. Before a packed house at Pro Players Stadium, the Dolphins leading Dallas. Seven to six. Miami ball at their own 30. Dan Marino has gone all the way at quarterback. If he'll throw it. Got a man catch by Randall Hill. Yes, indeed, it's a first down. And the first thing you do is you have to get your pass protection. You have to stop Leon left. You can't let that pressure come up the middle. Sims and Ruddy do a great job. They keep Leon Lett right on the line of scrimmage. And then you get Randall Hill. He's just running with speed out here. Alundus he's, Price. He's just taking off on Alundus Price. And I think Alundus Price was in because they were giving Deion Sanders a rest. That's
That's correct. And that's what I don't I don't agree with that. I think that you shouldn't be playing offense if you can't play every play of defense against the Dan Marino. Jabbar. Inside the 15 to about the 14. The Dolphins with that pass protection and an arm back there with the Dan Marino and the speed of a Randall Hill, that was the combination that they wanted. And I think they probably waited. Jimmy Johnson knows that Deion Sanders can't go every play on defense, and I think they waited to get Alundis Price in there and then get that matchup. Randall Hill, Hill their fastest guy against the backup corner. What Miami has done on their last two possessions as opposed to their first two. First down, Dolphins. The handoff is to Jabbar. Straight ahead inside the 10. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he was saying that you know, he likes to attack the line of scrimmage. And you can see him do that. He's just going to get the ball and just attack at the line of scrimmage. Get there as quickly as he can. And then, then when you get to the line of scrimmage, right now, feel the crease. Here's the crease that he feels. Now you break back. You see, but by attacking that line of scrimmage, you can make them react. And then after they react, then you're going to find your crease. That's exactly as it's supposed to be run. Second and five. Here's Marino. Back to Jabbar. They fake the reverse. Jabbar down at about the eight. Stopped by Fred Strickland. I saw Jimmy Johnson on my way in here today as I was yep. coming up here. <laughs> he says, I just can't wait to get this thing started. <laughs> you know, it, and you know, they said, oh, it's no big deal. It's just another game. I'll guarantee you, it is not just another game to Jimmy Johnson. It's a two-minute warning now with the Dolphins close and leading 7-6. Pat Summerall, John Madden. At the home of the Miami Dolphins, Pro Players Stadium, and the Dolphins lead the Cowboys seven to six. You know, one of the big plays was Dan Marino throwing to Randall Hill. The Cowboys had taken Deion Sanders out to rest him, put Alundis Bryce in there, and that was who they went to work on. Four wide receivers on third down. Marino out of the shotgun puts McDuffie in motion. up by the Cowboys. This is a fumble and this is going to be a touchdown Dallas. I don't think so Pat. I think they're nope. calling it dead. Well they stop. I think they're going to I think they're going to say it's an incomplete pass because the official there started waving the ball dead. He was pressured by Tony Tolbert from behind. He never saw him. Yeah, Tony Tolbert is right here. He comes from behind. See when Marino turns right there, watch Tony Tolbert come and then put the strip on him with his right hand right there. He strips the ball out. Now, if the ball was going forward, then that would be an incomplete pass. If he had the ball in his hand, it's a fumble. He had the ball in his hand. Then it's a fumble. 26-yard field goal attempt coming up by Netney. And look, fumble all the way. Barry Switzer certainly thinks so. That's a 10-point turnaround. Tell you, Miami 10, Dallas 6. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. It's 10-6, Miami over Dallas, and the Dolphins about to kick off. Still words and mumblings and angry feelings about whether that was a fumble or an incomplete pass by Marino. This is Herschel Walker. Herschel spun around is down at about the 27 by Jarris McPhail. 10-6, Marino has his Dolphins ahead of Barry Switzer's Dallas Cowboys. 10-6. Yeah, if we watch this, this pass at Dan Marino here, what the rule is, is if his arm is going forward, it's an incomplete pass. If, if his arm is still, then it's not. It's a fumble. See, now right now, he's hit. Now, does this arm come forward or not? If the arm comes forward, it's an incomplete pass. If the, arm, if the ball is knocked out, then it's a fumble. 
I think right there, maybe it was knocked forward, but if you look at Marino there, the arm was going forward, maybe caused by Tony Tolbert. But I it's a it judgment call by the referee. Strictly judgment. And the judgment was it was an incomplete pass. There's one guy who didn't think it was going forward. Because, you know, as I said, that was a 10-point play because, yeah. because they recovered and would have scored a touchdown with it. Instead, of Miami got field goal. Emmett Smith injured on the last play, and Emmett's down. We were just saying how he'd been injured yeah. since preseason and was finally looking a little better today. And this, you know, any any time you're a running back in this league, you're you're just a marked man. And until you get down, they can keep hitting you. And they do oh, keep hitting wow. you. And you see, he just got his legs caught up under him, and then he was just bent back over. Whew. It's like both legs bent back under him. That's why, you know, you know, on on one hand, you always want to back to fight for extra yards, fight, stay up, but then there's another point where when you can't get any more yards, you have to get down and get down as quickly as you can so that you don't take those last two hits. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones looking on. It didn't look, it doesn't look now as bad as it did a moment ago. Well, you know, sometimes you get bent like that and, and you just kind of go numb. You, you don't know what happened in that process of getting bent. And then when you get unbent, you find out that there's nothing there, that you're okay. <laughs> no, you don't. Sometimes it hurts. Yeah, it hurts but I mean, getting unbent. No, I know, but sometimes it looks a lot worse than it is, and sometimes it doesn't look real bad. Remember Mark Tuane last week? It didn't look real bad, and boom, he's out for the game. Emmett Smith looks real bad, and then he might be okay when these three guys get done working on him. Sherman Williams, in the meantime, has taken his place. Three wide receivers. Calvin Martin in motion. Here's Aikman. This time to Bjornsson, the tight end. And he gets the Dallas first down. Our half like trivia question. Eric Bjornsson, who just made the reception. Who holds the NFL's record for consecutive pass attempts without an interception? Is he here today? I don't know if he is or not, but I'll bet you he probably is. Timeout. Lewis Oliver was injured on the last play, and he tackled Bjornsson after that reception. I think it was one of those things where he was tackling Bjornsson, and his own guy hits him. Watch here he is in the tackle, and watch number 54, Zach Thomas is coming in, and he gets a little of Bjornsson, and he also gets a little of Oliver. Oliver's left arm was on top of Bjornsson and Zach Thomas hit that. See, again, a lot of times, you know, you're you're in, in the tackle and you're not expecting that other hit. And, and, we, and we see that in just about every game where where a guy gets injured and the hit was his own guy. Uh -huh. And it's usually defensive guys. Sometimes an offensive guy will hit his own guy, but usually that happens with defensive players because they're all taught to go to the ball. Looks like Emmett Smith is up and getting ready to put his hat on again. Three wide receivers for the Cowboys. Sherman Williams is the deep back who stays in the block and Aikman throws outside to Johnson again. Complete for a gain of about four. Here again, well, as the Cowboys hurry up. Aikman listening to the call from the sideline, relaying the information he got to the rest of the team, second and six. Aikman back to throw. Aikman steps out of bounds after he picks up the first down. Sean Hill, the nearest Dolphin. Again, the Aflac trivia question, who holds the NFL's record for the consecutive pass attempts without an interception? Is he here today? Yes, he is. Bernie Kosar, 308 pass attempts without an interception when he was with the Cleveland Browns in 90 and 91. And Bernie is the third quarterback for the Dolphins now. Emmett Smith's back in. There's Bernie. Where's Bernie played for Cleveland, and then he also played for these Dallas Cowboys and the Miami Dolphins. 49 
seconds left as Aitman retreats. Gets it outside to Emmett Smith to the 40. Sean Hill. So he was okay. He got all that stuff uh, straightened back Straight out, back. and now he can run again. Don't forget to stay with us at the half of Dockers Khaki's halftime report with JB, Terry, Howie, and Ronnie. Scores and highlights from around the league. 10 6 here at Pro Player Stadium. The Cowboys trying to get in range for a field goal at least. And I think to get in range, now is the time to go to Michael Irvin and, and let him get you in range. He split wide to the right. They come up to crowd him this time. Here's Aikman to Sanders. They didn't crowd him. He's and the they go to the other side. That's exactly right. They they rotated up on Michael Irvin, and that's what Troy Aikman was going to look at. And you'll see here they get the, the, the playing off on the other side. They rotated on the other side. Deion Sanders again with that cushion. They can throw that pass all day, just runs it out. See, now here's what they did on the other side. See, by coming up, you're going to see a rotation up here on Michael Irvin. Now, Troy Aikman, he looks at that. That's the first thing as he sees is a rotation on Michael Irvin. So that takes him, his read from the right outside to the left outside. And then on the left outside was number 21. Dion didn't quite make it back to the huddle on offense that time. Well, he stayed right where he caught the pass. He didn't make it anywhere. And now he checks out. Dallas has one more timeout remaining. And again, Jimmy Johnson knows this Cowboy team so well. When I said that, you know, this is the situation where they throw it to Michael Irvin, uh, he was saying the same thing, and that's why they rolled up on Michael Irvin and made him throw it out there to Deion Sanders. And I would expect this would be another time to throw it to Michael Irvin, and I would expect that they will roll up on him again, because if they don't, Trey Aikman will go to him. Michael's to the left this time. Aikman looks in that direction, and he does. To Michael Irvin. Yeah. They didn't roll up on him, and again, they throw that out that they've been throwing all day. You see, again, you see the coverage off of him, and then he can just push up, and then and then he got that one-on-one, -on -one, which to Troy Aikman means wide open, just throw him the ball, and he'll do it all day. Second and one. Outside to Irvin again. It'll be first and goal with about the seven. So the Cowboys have completed a lot of passes, so their plan is working, but Jimmy Johnson's plan is also working because the Cowboys only have six points so far. Now seven seconds left. Do you take a shot at another pass or do you go field goal? I would I would take a shot at another pass. I would I mean but, but you have to throw one of those three step drops and you have to throw it in the end zone. I mean and, and it can't be wait. There can't be any scramble. There can't be anything. You have to have your receiver throw a slant go one two three boom get rid of the ball. Irvin's right. Sanders is right. Irvin's left. Johnston was the man in motion. Here's Aikman. Pass incomplete. In the end zone, intended for Irvin. They had him blanketed. Yeah, but that's what Troy Aikman had to do, and, and the Miami defense knew it. I mean, he had to get back there. He went one, two, three, four, five, step, and was almost through an interception to Sean Wooden because they knew back there that they had to get in there, too. Jerry Jones is looking at him. We dodged a bullet there. Chris Bonio will try for his third of the day. Made his last 18 from this distance. Inside 30. And he hits another. That's the end of the first half. With the score, the Dolphins 10. The Cowboys 9. James Brown, Howie Long, and Ronnie Lott, and Terry Bradshaw will be along with the Dockers Khakis halftime report. Following these messages. The Dolphins lead the Cowboys by a point at Pro Player Stadium. And John, it's so often there's a game that's or a contest of any kind that's ballyhooed and talked about, and it doesn't live up to expectations. But this one has. This one has. And, it, you know, the Cowboys really look good. I mean, they were moving the ball up and down the field. They have all the completions, they have all the yardage, but they only have nine points. Right. Conversely, it looked like Miami didn't have anything going, but anytime you have Dan Marino there, a score is just boom, that far away. Well, let's have a look at the big one. In the second quarter, Dallas had the ball 12 minutes in the first quarter to three for Miami. There's his touchdown throw. Well, what he did on that play lined up Stanley Pritchett, his fullback, 
He lined him up on the line of scrimmage, and he got on a man-to-man -man with Broderick Thomas. Dan Marino saw that and just laid it in there perfectly. Well, as you pointed out in the first half, John, Jimmy knows, Jimmy Johnson, the Dolphins coach, knows not just the system that the Cowboys run, but the mannerisms and habits of the players. And he's having some success against his old team and other coaches have. Remember Dave Wanstad, who used sure. to be the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, went to the Bears and he beat them, uh, the Cowboys, in the opening day. And then last year, Norv Turner with the Washington Redskins, an ex-Cowboy assistant, beat the Cowboys twice. So coaches that leave the Cowboys have done well against them when they played against them. a new way to warm up. You yeah. see, that's how you stretch your Achilles before you play the second half. Kickoff in the direction of Herschel Walker goes out of bounds and that is a lot more costly than it was at one time. They bring it back to near midfield and give the receiving team a good field position. Yeah we were talking about this and you see that the total yard look at this 248 but only nine points. Now the Dolphins had 162, but they got the 10 points. No turnovers on either side, but that one with Dan Marino is going to be a controversial play, whether that was a, a fumble. forward pass or a fumble. Again, if his arm is going forward, and I think Marino's experience bought him that arm going forward because he just flicked his wrist at the end of the play after Tony Colbert hit him. First and 10, Dallas at the 40. They trail by a point. Here is Emmett Smith hammering into Dolphin territory. A gain of about 12 yards before he's stopped by Sean Wooden. Yeah, they, and they probably went in, the Cowboys probably went in and says, look, we got this big line here. We got Larry Allen here, one of the best blocking guards in football. We got big Eric Williams, one of the best blocking tackles in football. Let's just run the ball and pound on him. And when you get Eric Williams, he's about 330 pounds against Zach Thomas, who's five foot ten. You better get in behind that because that's a mismatch. He just leaned on him. <laughs> and he obliterated him. And Larry Allen got a fine block. Here is Emmett Smith again for the Dolphin 40. This time he went behind two and a and Newton. And that's what this this center of this line does so well. Earlier they went this that side. This time they're going to go over here. Here's two and they and, and and Nate Newton and you get a good again a good lead block by Moose Johnston. You see he's going to lead. He starts in there. They get a stalemate there. He just picks off his guy. Moose does and he turns again. That's Zach Thomas yep. and turns him. And if you keep Zach Thomas away from there, you're going to make some yards in the run. Well, Moose is bigger than Zach Thomas. This time Emmett Smith's hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss. Tim Bowens got in there quickly. Yep, Tim Bowens got the penetration. You're going to see the two big tackles here again getting the penetration and that's that's a way to stop the run. You see they try and block down on Bowens. Eric Williams can't get there and Bowens just gets in there and makes a tackle in the backfield for about that's three a yard tough, long. tough block that cutoff block. Yeah, he was he was just coming down. It, Eric Williams was waiting for him to come off Larry Allen's block, and Bowens was just too quick for him. Third and three. Sherman Williams flags on the play. Sherman Williams. This is Michael Irvin who makes the catch and gets inside the 35, about the 34. Zach Thomas made the stop. Flag on the play. Again, I think that the way the Dolphins are playing defense and they're going to, you know, play a soft coverage. I think that that uh, Michael Irvin catch 10, uh, 20 passes. Defense. It's declined. First down. First down, Cowboys. You watch here now. Now, did Aikman cause that by that by that little hitch there as he started back, or or did they jump off sides? I think. I think Aikman caused them to jump off sides that time. Emmett Smith back in. Irvin has eight catches. Irvin has nine catches. As he swings close to a first down, Calvin Jackson, the defender. I know there were stories about the Cowboys uh, uh, this week from Emmett Smith, from the backfield coach Joe Brodsky, and that they wanted to run the ball more. and. 
and they thought they should run it. I think I, I, I think what Troy Aikman, I think what Ernie Zampezi always liked was balance. But when you again, when you get a secondary playing like this and you have a Michael Irvin, you know, which is a big target, then you just have to throw the ball all day. Two tight ends, second and two. Emmett Smith has the first down near the Dolphin 20. Miami ahead by a point. So far, the, the Cowboys have passed 26 times and run 17 times. There's Ernie Zampezi, of course, the offensive coordinator who, who makes those calls. And again, he sees the same thing that we see, that, that the, with those corners playing so soft that it's so easy to complete outs, you know, why bang your head against the wall? Smith is deep. Aikman back to throw it. Kelvin Martin made a diving catch. But he was out of bounds. Or was he? Yes, he was. Again, that's that same thing. You see, he's running and out over here to the right side. And now he should come back a little. Take yeah, him a catch. He makes that catch, or he had it in his hands. And then they must rule that the ball, as it goes down, hits the ground. I don't know that somewhere in there they must rule that the ball hit the ground. He didn't object too much. It looked like a pretty good catch. Didn't I, know it? I, went, I would have objected. <laughs> Here's Emmett Smith. And he just trots out of bounds at about the 20. Yeah, that's one of those business decisions there. Yep. That's one of those things where, you know, you say you, you should turn up. Why run out of bounds? Because there was great pursuit by that Miami Dolphin defense and no place to turn up. And these are the plays that, you know, have been getting the, the Cowboys in trouble. You know, they get drives going, and they have one play that doesn't work, then they get long yardage, and if they don't pick it up, they have to go for another field goal. Third and nine. They're three for six on their third down conversion attempts. Hard for that line to hear. Irvin left. Aitman throws to his right to Sanders. Ball came loose, but he was out of bounds. Again, it's that same pattern. Here's Terrell Buckley there giving the, the cushion. It's just going to be an out pattern that you, you drive him up, and you drive him up, and then you just turn out. Now, when he plants right here, the ball is out of there, and he just throws a perfect pass to Deion Sanders. Jimmy's trying to say that he didn't have control of it. That's the official sign for bobbling the ball as you go out of bounds. But Deion Sanders caught that thing. He didn't bobble that one. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Aikman gets to Emmett Smith, and Smith flashes down to the five. Dwight Hollier on the stop. See, I think when you talk about the the Cowboys and their lack of running game, this is this is where it's really been hurting them because usually when they move the ball down the field once they get inside the 10 yard line then they just give you a, a heavy dose of Emmett Smith now if the running game isn't going then you don't get touchdown second and goal at the five I would expect another Emmett Smith run Eggman has Martin right Irvin left outside Johnson he lost the ball the ball went out of bounds and I think it was a catch and ruled a bumble and the Cowboys will keep it. That's what they're that's what they're ruling a catch and a fumble and the fumble went backwards. You're going to see Daryl Johnson when he's not in the backfield. It usually is a pass. He throws it to Bjornsson here. Bjornsson turns up to go into the end zone. The ball is knocked out of there. So it'll be the Cowboys ball where it went out of bounds on the four yard line. Third and goal from that spot. Third and goal at the four. Emmett Smith is deep. Darrell Johnson in front of him. Aikman calls a timeout. The Dolphins by one. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. By HBO. It's not TV. It's HBO. And by 7-Eleven. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. Well, I thought we were going to lose that sunset. 
Uh, but you never see it. I've only seen the sun set one time in my life. That was a shot like this in Dallas. Because something like this happens and you have to get off it because it's third down. You think you see a lot of sunset, but in truth, you really don't. You've seen only two now. Right? Well, no, that, that one, I didn't see that oh, that's sunset. True. That's the point I'm making. Only one. Here's Aikman back to throw. In the middle, touchdown, Dallas. To Bjornsson from Aikman. Four yards. And they're going to go for two. I think that's what Troy Aikman says. Stay in here. We're going for two. Again, he just backs out. He's going to throw to the left. And he sees Bjornsson just comes in and just gets right over the goal line and faces back towards Troy Aikman. Bjornsson being helped now yeah, after he scored the touchdown and the way he's holding his left leg. Of course, and he was just starting to come into his own as a tight end. Yeah. And one of the things that the Cowboys talk about missing so much was Jay Novacek. And Eric Bjornsson started to take a little of that pressure off for a tight end. And now he scores the touchdown. He had, he had fumbled to put him in this position. And they had to come back to him, and he scored the touchdown and then gets this. The other tight end is Ty J. Armstrong. And Ty J. Armstrong is really more of a blocker than he is a receiver. And they use him in two tight ends and for run situations where Bjornsson is more of a receiver like Jay Novacek. They are one of one on two part two point conversion attempts. Flag on the play. Before it ever got underway. 79. Ball Offense. start. Prior Eric Williams. Snap. That's Before Eric. the snap. That's Eric Williams' third penalty today. He's really had a tough day. Three penalties. And again, remember that one sack earlier in the game by Trace Armstrong. He beat Eric Williams. And now they're not going to go for two. Boniol comes on. And five yards further out, they'll have a we'll have a field goal attempt. Yeah, because their their passing game from from this area is not the strength of their game. They're they're really too far to run it, and they're too close to have an effective passing game the way they pass. So Bonio will try to add the extra point, and does 16 to 10. Let's go back. I can't believe you've only seen one sunset. Yeah, where, where the sun really set, where you see it, and then you don't see it go. like that right there. Now we're up to two. Third quarter, Dallas 16, Miami 10. Providing today's shots from above, the Goodyear Blimps, Stars, and Stripes. Goodyear Blimps, by the way, are in their fourth decade of live sports coverage. Bonio's kickoff handled by Irving Spike. And Spikes is out to about the 20. Bjornsson, the Cowboy tight end, just taken inside for x rays. As soon as we have some information about. About his condition, we'll let you know. Well, it happened on the touchdown. Yeah. Remember the play before, he'd, he'd caught one and fumbled, and then Troy Aikman came back to him in the end zone for the touchdown, and as he was tackled, he injured his leg. And that two point play would have been big. You know, yeah. it would have given the Cowboys a situation where where if the if the Dolphins get a touchdown, they're tied. Now, if the Dolphins get a touchdown, they'll be ahead. Here's Marino back to throw. Scrambling. Just threw it away. Jarris McPhail was the intended receiver. Oh, but he had one because yeah. Jarris McPhail had beaten Brock Marion and, and, and had Dan Marino been able to throw that to Jarris McPhail. Now, I said Randall Hill was the fastest wide receiver. Jarris McPhail is the fastest receiver, and you're going to see him come across. Now, we'll, we'll, we'll see when Marino starts to scramble. We're going to see that Jarris McPhail is right up here. Now, if Marino would have had time to lead him out there, that could have been a touchdown. He just couldn't get set. Marino. 
Jabbar, who's wrestled to the ground without a gain. You know, now, this is a thing that Dan Marino doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to have to come scrambling out of there. And you can see him just as he throws that ball, know that he's going to get hit. And he was wincing even before yeah. he got hit. And that's the thing. I mean, you know, you're coming off. You already have a bad Achilles tendon. You had that operate on. You just had surgery on your ankle where they put a screw in it. And it's tough to run and throw. As long as he can stay in the pocket, though, he's okay. Four wide receivers this time. Marino stays in the pocket. Lofts it up in the direction of Fred Barnett. Coverage by Kevin Smith. You know, Fred Barnett, the fact that he's back out on the field is an amazing story. He injured his knee early. They thought that he was out for the season. He had a ligament from a cadaver put in his leg. And then he is back playing. He played last week. And he said it's, it's it's one of the most amazing recoveries that they've ever seen. It is amazing. John Kidd back to punt. Kelvin Martin deep for Dallas. He'll have a chance to do something with this one. Martin to about the 43. Dallas leading 16 to 10. And we have eight minutes and seven seconds left to play in the third quarter. The word on Eric Bjornsson, the cowboy tight end, was he sprained his left ankle. They're retaping right now and they'll bring him back out. In the meantime, it's Ty J. Armstrong when they need a tight end, and they do on this play. Deion Sanders put out wide to the right. Irving is left. Aikman gets it out to Emmett Smith. Good open field tackle this time. Right now for a McDonald's game break. Let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. Pat, when Steve Young was knocked out, it was left up to back up Jeff Brom to do the job. He did, finding Terrell Owens. 20-yard touchdown strike. San Francisco eats by Houston 10-9. Back to Miami, Pat and John. And the Cowboys lead the Dolphins 16 to 10. It's second and 13. Reverse coming to Deion Sanders. And Sanders stretched the ball out to try to save a yard and almost lost it. You know, the way that they've been moving the ball, the, the Cowboys don't need this kind of stuff. I mean, this isn't going to be a big play for them. You know, they fake it to Emmett Smith, and he gets drilled, and then they hand it to Deion Sanders, and all those defensive guys are just waiting to get a shot at Deion Sanders. And now a Dolphin is injured. You know, that's one of those plays that looks great in practice, and you... Dwight up, Hollier. You know, and Deion runs around and high steps and all that, and everyone... <laughs> you play it in a game, it doesn't gain anything. 16-10, Cowboys leading. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Beautiful skyline of Miami and one of the most beautiful stadiums in the country. Pro Player Stadium. The home of the Dolphins, third and 17 for the Cowboys. They lead by six. There's Aikman to throw it. Deep for Urban, who is wide open. Michael Urban inside the 20, 10, down at about the three. I don't know what Terrell Buckley was doing out there. He was a corner on that side. Pat, and he just stopped and stood and watched Michael Irvin. Just watch him out here. Here's Buckley. Now, maybe he was going to be in a rotation, but watch him. Irvin just runs right by him, and Buckley just stands here, and he just watches him. Instead of sprinting, he, he had to be sprinting. He could have done there, caught up with that thing. Michael Irvin <laughs> just stood there. was just wide I don't open. Know. Now, I don't know if that was supposed to be a rotated zone or if Terrell Buckley was caught up by the out of the out and up 
I, Michael Irvin. He had to be expecting somebody to help him deep. Aikman. Hands to Emmett Smith, who gets a yard, perhaps, and that's about it. But the thing that surprised me, and I think that Jimmy Johnson is shocked by, is, is, is when Michael Irvin went by Terrell Buckley, Buckley just stood there. He just, just stood watched there and him, watched him. Watched him go by. And then that didn't take any kind of pass by Troy Aikman. I mean, you're never going to see a guy this wide open. 61 yards. Yeah, here it is right here. Just at normal speed. You see, he went for the out, and he just kind of stands here. Here's Michael Irvin. No wonder it's a big play. That is like Halloween candy. Again, the Cowboys pound it straight ahead with Emmett Smith, and there isn't much there. And again, this is where the where the Cowboys are having trouble, and part of it is is not having a tight end. You know, I mean, not having a Jane Novacek and being able to, you know, throw those little things in the inside the ten yard line. Part of it is they haven't had Michael Irvin all year. Part of it is is good defense, but this hasn't been a strength of the Cowboys this year. Third down. Aikman. Touchdown to Michael Urban. Jerry Jones. Son Stephen. Wife Jean. I mean, Johnson thing in all those years and everything he taught yeah. Michael Irvin is coming back to haunt him now. But the big one was that one to Michael Irvin where he went right by Terrell Buckley. 61 yards. And on that one, he just ran a slant down there. And if you're going to throw a slant on the goal line, you always want to throw it to a big body. And Michael Irvin is a big bodied wide receiver. Again, the Cowboys are going to try for two. Flag on the play. Urban made the catch. Well, on the touchdown, he went inside with a slant. On the two-point play, he went outside. That was his first touchdown of the year. Offensive interference called against Michael Urban. I think Michael Urban was saying this is starting to be too easy. Here he is out here, and he's going to push here and then run it out. See, that's what they called right there, that, that push off that he ran in to Calvin Jackson before he made the out move. But Michael Irvin's always done that. Oh, yeah. That's nothing new. But if Just he about on every play. But I'll tell you, if he doesn't watch it, yeah, but these guys are so far off him today, he doesn't even have to push <laughs> off him because they don't get in that position. But if he doesn't watch it, he's going to catch 20 passes today. Bonio for the extra point, a little bit longer. Actually, it's about 30 yards out. Second time this has happened, the Cowboys yep. have gone for two and got a penalty and had to kick the extra point. Bonio is wide with this one not good, wide right. So it's Dallas 22 now and Miami 10, 440 left in the third. Pat Summerall, John Madden back at Pro Player Stadium in Miami. Look at this, the total yards of this quarter with 440 left. 117 to minus one. The Dolphins have only had the ball three times. Irving spikes to about the 26, knocks out of bounds. Here's a touchdown again. And look at this throw by Troy Aikman. I mean, you know, first of all, you have to see the guy, then you have to get it to him. But look what you have to do, what you have to get through to get it to him. Here's Michael Irvin. He's going to bump in here and just run a slant pattern right in here. And that's why you like a big-bodied wide receiver, because he can push off a little there, get inside, get that body position, and how the quarterback can stand in there and see all those things and sort it out, I have no idea. It helps as if, if you're as big as Aikman. That's why Troy Aikman's Troy Aikman. That's why Dan Marino's Dan Marino, because they can do those things. Out of the shotgun. Marino gets it outside to Parmalee. Parmalee will get a Dolphin first down. Boy, did Leon Lett hit Ooh. Dan Marino on that. Ooh. Did he ever? Look at this ball control and what Dallas has done. They've had the ball 28 minutes to Miami's 12. 
55 plays to 23. But look at this hit of Leon Lett right here. He goes right by Sims, straight up the middle, and boom, does he unload on Dan Marino. You look back at last week against Atlanta, and Atlanta had the ball all the time, and Dallas only had it 18 minutes. Three wide receivers for Marino, who swings it outside to Benny Parmalee. And Parmalee fumbles, picked up by Sanders, Deion Sanders. Gets it to the 37-yard line where he's taken down, and the Cowboys will take it over again. 3.45 left third quarter. It's 22 to 10. And Marino did his part. He hit Parmley with it. Again, the thing is, is things are going to happen. Guys are going to catch passes, but after they catch passes, you have to make things happen. Watch this. Deion Sanders ripped, Deion it, loose. Sanders ripped it loose. As Instead of tackling him, he tried to get the ball out of there. Then another cowboy comes in and hits him. Watch Deion. He's not even trying to take him down. He's just trying to hold him up and go for the ball. Then as Leon Lett comes in and whaps him, he whaps firmly off of the ball. Sherman Williams gets the carry and gets a hole up the middle. Emmett Smith gets a rest. You know, that was that was good hustle. I mean, it, uh, a lot of that was Deion Sanders making that play, but it was good hustle by Leon Lett. I mean, because that was a pass play, yeah. and he was downfield pursuing, and then he knocked Parmley off the ball so that Deion could get it. The big cat is playing at a different level. Yeah, he's been kind of quiet, though, in that first half. Sims had done a pretty good job against him, but he got a good pass rush against Marino, and then that play was a heck of an effort. Herschel Walker's in the backfield as a blocker for Sherman Williams. Flag on the play. Williams ducked his head and got about three or four yards, but it's holding against Dallas. Yeah, that's it. There was, there was two penalties on that one, or two guys threw a flag. Johnny Greer, the referee, through his after the play. Wonder if he has the same penalty. He already gave the, the signal of holding against the Cowboys. Holding 61 offense. Still second down. Nate Newton, the Here, culprit. There's big Nate right there, right to the left of Troy Aikman. See, he's gonna pull. Oh, he didn't hold. I mean, he, oh, oh, he grabbed an ankle right there. I was gonna say he got in a position to hold, but he didn't hold. And then just as I said that, he grabbed the ankle of Aaron Jones. Well, man, then he lost his feet and went for the hand to the ankle. Second and 16. Aikman throws him. Calvin Martin made the reception, and he is flung to the ground by Calvin Jackson. I'd, I'd like to know how many times they've they've completed that pattern because it's been different guys catching it. We saw Deion Sanders catch it, Michael Irvin numerous times that time Kelvin Martin and again that's the area that they wanted to work on over there on Calvin Jackson and in front of Calvin Jackson I don't know that Troy Aikman wants to see Calvin Jackson come out and probably any quarterback who completes over 70 percent will win yeah. most of their games yeah, I would think so because you've had you've had good pass protection and you've had you look know, at the day receiving and, and all those things and Again, part of that is is the the Miami Dolphins are playing off. See how deep they play off here, and they haven't been getting a pass rush. When you get that combination of no pass rush and a soft secondary, you're going to complete 80% of your passes if you're Troy Aikman. Third, Aikman to throw it. Lost it outside. Calvin Martin, the receiver, juggled it and lost it. He would have had the first down if he hung on. Calvin Martin, he was the hero last week against Atlanta. Remember when oh, the Cowboys yeah. needed a big play? It was Aikman to, to Kmart. He had the first. That Barry Switzer looked like he might cry. Well, I'll tell you, you know, you talk about a guy who wants to win this game. You know, as Barry told us last night, he said, you know, I'm in a no-win situation. Right. If I right. lose, I'm an idiot. And if I win, well, I had the best players. He said, there's no way I'm going to win anything here. Jets punt. Handled by O.J. McDuffie. Fair caught at the 15. This has really been a topsy-turvy year. 
The NFL on Fox next Sunday. The Eagles, who won again today, go to Texas Stadium. The Cardinals against the Giants. The Lions and the Packers. The Lions destroyed today by Green Bay. The Bucks and the Bears, the Rams and the Steelers, and the Panthers against the Falcons. The neighborhood rivalry. And then at 4 o'clock, the Redskins against Buffalo. The Redskins. I would think if you had to say who's the, the biggest surprise in the NFL this year, it would have to be the Washington Redskins. You know, the Green Bay Packers have done well, but a yeah. lot of people picked them to do well. I don't think that anyone picked the Washington Redskins to do this well. I know I didn't. I don't think you did. Well, maybe, no, I know I did. Maybe Troy Aikman did because one of Troy Aikman's best friends is North Turner, the head coach of the Redskins. Well, they still have to play Troy Aikman and the Cowboys twice. Yeah, big cat Leon Lett took off there before anything was snapped. The Redskins and Cowboys play on Thanksgiving Day. We'll be there. Approachment, 78, defense. First down. Encroachment, heck, that's more encroachment when you, when you go that far. <laughs> yeah. When you're the big, big old big cat, you, you got all this stuff going, you go whap, 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 whap. That's more than encroachment. The big well, cat, if, big cat went creeping. Yeah, he's in, he's hit this way. When you end up way back there, you got to have another word for it. Three wide receiver set up. Jairus McPhail, the ball carrier, gets up close to a first down, and he gets it. Who's this guy right here? Oh, Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Who's the lady next to him? Right here. Yes. Ann Margaret? Yes. Huh? How's that? <laughs> Didn't you coach Burt Reynolds? Yes, I did. At Florida State? Yes. Was he any good? He was a defensive back. <laughs> I know. Was he any good, I said. He probably yeah, was. He had a good personality. Ah, those guys can't play. He had a good personality. <laughs> That's McPhail. Have you ever seen a defensive back with a good personality was any good? Well, that's too many qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> defensive backs usually don't have nice personalities. <laughs> and linebackers don't either. I mean, linebackers, you know, they're all half goofy. You know, they got their eyes, you know, staring and looking and crossed. And Now, the nice guys are like this guy here, Jason Garrett. He could be a nice guy. Yeah, I mean, you know, third quarterback, wears a cap. Went to Princeton. Should you know, be in politics. Has all those things going for him. These guys like this guy here, Charles Haley. Nope. No. <laughs> no they're, they're in the other team. There's no, no mystery about that. Somebody jumped. Second down and about seven. Dallas 22, Miami 10. 32 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Johnny Greer's had a busy day. Ball start. 89. Offense. Still second down. Randall Hill. Here's Charles Haley after a rest. Well, you know, even even when there's a penalty, I mean, he only knows one way to play, and he plays with leverage. And you just see what he does is, is he gets his helmet and gets everything underneath his guy because the first thing you want to do is get your guy lifted up. Lined up at left defensive end. And he's going against James Brown over there. Screen pass. McPhail just dropped it. See what our Charles Haley does. Well, you know, again, he's either going to use speed and just go around the guy, or he's going to make a quick move to the inside. You see what he did there? See, he had Brown on the play before where he jacked him up, and then he wants Brown to get ready for that, and then he's going to hit him and take an inside move on him. Charles is like a boxer. Everything he does is to set up the next thing he's going to do. Yeah, he is very good with leverage also. Yeah, and, and, and when he's in there, this is one kind of defense. And when he's in there, not in there, it's not as good. I mean, it's not the same defense. Four wide receivers. Marino out of the shotgun. Fires. Flag on the play. I think the pass might have been intercepted. That's what the Cowboys are indicating. And so is the official. But a flag on the play. Perfect. It was Fred Barnett. Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. Was right there. They both went diving for it. Dan Marino, he's there arguing that he had that thing zipped in there. Both players yep. were going for the ball. There's no infraction. First down, Dallas. No. Play. Both players going for the ball. No infraction. Well, here's both players there. What I think they're saying is that Kevin Smith didn't foul. There's no penalty on the play. 
you know, that they both went for the ball, and then when they came up with it, they say down there that Kevin Smith has it. I don't know how you know from that. I don't know. I don't know what official would know that Kevin Smith has that ball right now. Looks like he got it first. I don't know. Does Ty Base go to the defense? I don't think so. But I think he had it first. I don't know, but Marino when that was out there arguing, he had a pretty good view of it. Aikman gets to him at Smith. Dallas at the Miami 30 yard line. And yeah, that's the end of the third quarter. And the score at Pro Player Stadium, the Dallas Cowboys leading Miami 22 to 10. Yeah. 22 to 10. Dallas leading Dallas ball at the Miami 29. You know, it's funny how uh, for for six months everyone was talking about you know Jimmy versus Jerry Jerry versus Jimmy what a big game and everything. once the game starts there's no time Jimmy's not doing anything except standing down there in the sideline and Jerry's not doing anything except sitting up here in the box and it's all about these guys right here that's what the whole thing's about anyway Jimmy yelling at the official he's standing and Jerry's sitting now, the only important thing is the guys between the chalk. Emmett Smith, the ball carrier. Marino didn't like that conversation. No. He wanted to bring that thing to an end, didn't he? Well, you know, he threw that ball to Fred Barnett that Kevin Smith intercepted there, and I don't think Barnett was open at all. I mean, it looked like it was a little forced, and maybe some coach, Gary Stevens, or someone said, hey, don't, don't force it. You don't have to force the ball to Fred Barnett. And, he said, force, I'll show you. And he forced the phone down to the other part of it. Herschel Walker lined up in the slot right. Here's Aikman. Outside to Darrell Johnston, head over heels at the 11. When he gets the ball after he catches a pass, he does take some blows. Yeah, but I think he went heels over head. Maybe so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Watch him when, when he gets hit here. Here he's going to catch the ball. He comes across. Now he's going to turn up. Little block there from Deion Sanders. Now when he gets hit there, his heels went heels right up over, over his, his head. head. You're yeah. right. You're right. I said head over heels, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Heels over head. Heels over head. Hey, you don't want to get knocked in a position where you got your heels over your head. Can be very awkward. But if you're Moose Johnston, you're going to be in that position a lot. His whole life has been his heels over his head. Moose gets the carry. It gets knocked back. Gets a little rest on the turf. I was talking to him before the game. He said, I am glad. As Deion Sanders ran by, he said, I am glad he's playing offense and defense and not me. Yeah, he said on a day like today, he doesn't, he doesn't want to be the guy going both ways. Yeah. Although Deion's done pretty well. I mean, I think the one time that he did is when they got a Lundis Bryce in there. And Randall Hill got that big play on him because Dion was resting. Second and nine, Dion split wide right. Irvin is to the left. Darrell Johnson comes in motion. Aikman looking for Emmett Smith, finds him, and Emmett's in the end zone. And the Cowboys move further ahead. Sounds like a lot of Cowboys fans here. Yeah. Listen to him. Ten yard touchdown pass from Aikman to Emmett Smith. And you can see the frustration of Jimmy Johnson, a guy who developed this. He developed that combination of Troy Aikman to Michael Irvin and Troy Aikman to Emmett Smith and this big offensive line and all these things that are working against him today. Uh, do you think that if the Cowboys have a chance, they will do what they call rub it in? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? 29 to 10, they lead. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Honda, vehicles designed to help simplify your life. By the United States Marine Corps, the change is forever. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Pro Player Stadium, packed in the much-anticipated battle between the Cowboys and the Dolphins. 
Cowboys in control of things right now. Jarris McPhail. He's got some room. He's also got some speed as he gets out to the 40. Stopped by Roger Harper finally. Yep, Bill Bates down there with that <laughs> cast on his on his arm. But again, here's the wedge. So, so the thing you want to do is get into your wedge. Get in behind your wedge as quickly as you can and then break through that wedge. Get up to the sideline. Now, if he could get by Darren Woodson right there, that could have been a much bigger play. Now, here's old Bill Bates, number 40. He's running down there one-handed. Right the guy's pulling him down, doing everything, but you just keep going. If you're a special teams guy, you just keep going until you can get your head in on something. That's what Bates has been doing for a long, long time. Marino out of the shotgun. Up the middle, intended for Irving Spikes. Incomplete. Right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. Pat and John, you talk about the intensity of Bill Bates. Take a look at the play in the upset of the day. Halfback option, Tyrone Wheatley to Chris Callaway. New York goes on top, never relinquishes the lead, beating the Gi Detroit badly. We send it back to Pat and John. That's another strange score in the 35-7, the Giants over Detroit. Marino, second and ten out of the spread. Three wide receivers. Marino locked it. Incomplete. No penalty marker. Randall Hill is really upset. That's close. Yeah, of course. Uh, now, now, once it went within the five yard line, from five yards of line of scrimmage, you. You can hit him and touch him. Now, what Kevin Smith does is okay right there. Now, after he gets by five yards, you can't touch him. And that's what Randall Hill is complaining about. I don't know that everything Kevin Smith did in that first five yards was legal, but what he did after sure as heck wasn't. He had a legitimate complaint. Third and ten. Well, Kevin Smith has become a very physical corner. A very good corner. Marino pulls it down, wheels it underhanded. Intended for spikes incomplete. And they'll have to punt again. That's what Marino can do with the ball. I mean, he's, you know, the score is 28 to 10. I mean, he's losing here, but the thing is, he can still do things with that football. I mean, I mean, just watch him. I mean, I mean, I mean, here he was, he was trying to throw that ball out to the left, and he just threw it underhand, kind of sidearm, and, you know, any, bring it out of there. That looked like a Sonny Jurgensen pass. Yeah. Kelvin Martin will field this kick at about the seven-yard line. And gets it out to about the 70. That might be one that he'd think about handling again. Larry Izzo down to make the stop. 29 to 10, Dallas over Miami. Cowboys leading the Dolphins. 29 to 10, America's number one pregame show, the NFL on Fox, next Sunday at noon Eastern Time. JB, Howie, Terry, Ronnie. Terry always is short in those pictures. Yeah, you know, and they used to have Jimmy there last year, and Jimmy got so used to being on camera. They have a thing here that's called Jimmy Cam. Eggman's pass is complete to Michael Irvin. He has had a big, big day yeah. in his homecoming. You know what? If you look at their monitor wall here, I think it's right here. The one in the middle is the Jimmy Cam. They have a camera on Jimmy Johnson at all times. And, and Why? In case he runs away? Or what? I don't know. I don't know. They just shoot the whole game. This guy here never sees the game. He just watches, watches Jimmy Johnson all the time. And then here, if you're in a luxury box, you can put that up there. If you want to watch the game, you can look this way. If you want to watch Jimmy, you can turn back and look the other way. And there were not a lot of people looking. Looking at, at the Jimmy camp. Right. <laughs> Flag on the play. That was Emmett Smith to the, his left behind Mark Tuanay. That's a remarkable accomplishment that Tuanay has been able to play the whole day. He's not in there now. Hegeman has replaced him. Yeah, and I think that I think it was remarkable, though, that two and a played when they needed two and a and uh, 
And you know, until he got hurt, you know, a week ago, sometimes people didn't realize how important a player that Mark Tuane is to this football team. And then you take your starting left tackle out, you put someone else in there, and everyone is starting. You know, in fact, when Mark Tuane got hurt last week, you know how big that was. In the first half, Jerry Jones came out of his box down on the field and tapped tap Barry Switzer on the shoulder and wanted to know what happened to Mark Tuane. <laughs> yeah. So that's how big it is. And then and then here he is. He rehabs, practices for one day, and he is plays one the, one tough guy. Yeah. And probably if you had a you know if you had a measure of of toughness, whatever that was, his his deal would go off the scale. I mean, he could be the the toughest guy on this team, or the toughest guy on on any team. George Hageman has taken his place. He's about the same size as Eric Williams. Here's Emmett Smith. He spun out of one tackle and got up to about the 30. Aaron Jones made the stop. Emmett Smith looked like he could get in the uh, in the sweat contest this week. Probably could. Yeah, I mean he's he's got his work cut out for him. He got that sweat going down those pants. Talked about earlier the homecomings. This is Emmett Smith's homecoming back to Florida, but he's a long way from here. The Pensacola. Yeah, you know, with all this stuff about Jimmy and Jerry, all those players coming back from Florida weren't mentioned. Dan Marino was just kind of a note in this game. Here's Emmett Smith again. Lock still running. Lewis Oliver knocked him out of bounds. Lewis Oliver was telling us yesterday when he was going to school at the University of Florida that he went to the high school all-star game and they had this little guy from Pensacola and he didn't seem to do much of anything but when the game was over the guy he was talking about had gained 189 yards and it was Emmett Smith and then he said yeah but he won't be able to do that in college then he said he came to Florida and he said he did it there in yeah. college and then everyone said yeah well he doesn't have speed. he won't be able to do that in the pros and he said he's done it on every level 22 carries, 73 yards. Here's Aikman back to throw. Dumps it out to Emmett Smith. Emmett gets away from a couple of tacklers, including Zach Thomas. He's brought down by Shane Burton, finally. The Cowboys will have to punt. Yeah, we talk about Dan Marino and his quick release, and, and just watch Troy Aikman and the, and the touch and the feel that he has here. I mean, he gets back here, he moves a little, now he was all ready to throw the ball downfield. Now he, he realized he had to dump it off and he just took everything off just, and just gave a little touch pass even though he didn't get a first down. But you have to change everything that you do as a quarterback. Jet back to punt. Good snap. And Jets kick is also a good one. O.J. McDuffie retreated back to the 15 and is hit down at about the 20. This game is presented by authority. The National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Miami Dolphins and the National Football League is prohibited. Did you understand what I said or what he said? From high above, our shots are from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, and our thanks to Captain Esch and the entire crew for the many spectacular shots in today's telecast, and they have been, indeed, spectacular. The skylines and the sunset. John second. Well, it really didn't count because that was tape. Yeah, I, mean, you know, I, I mean, my point is, is you don't really see it live. You want to go through your life, or will you go through life seeing only one sunset? At live, where I really saw it all the way. Marino. Randall Hill, the intended receiver. You know, you talk about guys coming back, and you always think of John Elway. You know, fourth quarter comebacks in NFL history. John Elway has 39 of them. And then the next two guys were Dan Marino and Joe Montana. I'll tell you, if you had to put together a team and you had a quarterback, that wouldn't be a bad group to start with. And then maybe add Troy Aikman, too. Any one of them. But I don't, I, I don't think that today is going to be the 32nd one. Marino out of the shotgun. Gave it a hard count. Offense. 
still second down. Because this this Miami Dolphin, uh, Dolphin offense has really never been able to get anything going consistently. They got a, a few big plays, and with a Dan Marino, you can always get a big play, but they haven't been able to get a running game going consistently or a passing other than that one drive where Marino went four for four down on the field. Mm -hmm. They haven't had the ball maybe long enough to get a lot of consistency. Four wide receivers, second down about 15. Here's Marino. This one's caught by O.J. McDuffie. And boy, did Tony Tolbert hit Dan Marino again on that one. That was close to that, uh, that first one that he did. And we talked about the things that they haven't done, and look, they just haven't had the plays. I mean, 3-2, three, 3-1. Three, just over eight minutes left. McDuffie had it, lost it, or did he? Incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down, another Dolphin punt coming up. Today's game being produced by Bob Stinner and directed by Sandy Grossman. Technical producers Bob Muller, the associate directors Rich Russo, broadcast associates Mike Roig and Fran Morrison. Studio is produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. And the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. Then there's that guy that uh, brought the Jimmy Cam to us. <laughs> Do we need his name? That's a good kick. This is Kelvin Martin all the way back inside the 10. He gets it back to about the 19 or 20 where the Cowboys will take over. And we'll take a little break here with the Jimmy Cam. Marino and the coach. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Porsche. Who wish to remind you there is no substitute. Miami at night. Pro Player Stadium at night. With the Cowboys leading the Dolphins 29 to 10. Aikman with Sherman Williams, the deep back. He gets the carry. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. You know, the the Cowboys are are, are getting back to where they were a year ago, and I and this this to me is the best that they've looked and they they, they struggled in preseason and they struggled you know early in the season and then they got Michael Irvin back and I didn't think that was the answer right away but now they start to look like they're starting to become a championship team I, I I'm not saying they jumped all the way from being average to being a championship team but I think they're starting to do that 435 yards today far above their average yeah you see where their average was put them 25th in the NFL of course that's not the Cowboys Chairman Williams again and he struggles to about the 22 clock running 650 left Chris Singleton made the stop Miami is the only NFL team that the Cowboys have not beaten on the road excluding the expansion teams Jacksonville and Carolina yeah, they taking care of that and their old coach today it looks like the yeah. last game that Jimmy Johnson lost as a Cowboy coach in fact was to Dallas I mean to Miami I'm sorry third and seven that was that Thanksgiving Day game in the snow here's Aikman incomplete intended for Urban and that shouldn't have been incomplete. You know, uh, Michael Irvin's showing you that he believes that shouldn't have been incomplete because if you're a great receiver, you don't want to drop anything at any time. And Troy Aikman did his part. The offensive line protected. He got the ball there. And Michael Irvin just didn't catch it. New team record for pass attempts, 2,959 for Troy Aikman. Had been held by Roger Staubach. You know, Troy Aikman was saying that his legacy isn't going to be a lot of numbers. It's going to be a lot of wins, but his legacy is going to be as one of the great quarterbacks. Dolphins came after that punt. O.J. McDuffie, fair catch. The show that has become a national phenomenon has moved to Sunday nights. And if you're not already a fan, this is the perfect time to get hooked. 
Don't miss one of the most thrilling X-Files yet tonight at 9, 8 Central, here on Fox. Miami ball, their own 38-yard line. 29 to 10, Dallas leads. Tony Tolbert has had a, a big game as a pass rusher today. And that's why they ran that drive. <laughs> that's Jarris McPhail, yep. Because, Just as you were saying it. Right, if there's been anyone that's been consistently on or towards Dan Marino all day, it's been Tony Tolbert with a little help later from Leon Lett. Dolphins hurry up. Marino back to throw. Dumps it out to McPhail. McPhail into Cowboy territory to the 45. Stopped by Brock Marion. This is one of the guys that Jimmy was, was saying a couple times that he wants to get in the game more, wants to get the ball to more, is Jarris McPhail. Dolphins have all three timeouts remaining. McDuffie, the intended receiver. Brock Marion on the coverage. Yeah, this is a, the way you think of Dan Marino, not being down 29 to 10, but, you know, you know, having to come back, being in this where you have to throw every game, where you just get in a shotgun, stand back there, lick your fingers, and, you know, and fling that thing. That's a picture I have of Dan Marino. I think if you could say, what should a guy throw the ball like? What is the picture perfect quarterback? I would say this guy right here. The guy on the other side's not bad. No, I, I, I take them both. Marino. To Randall Hill. Ball's loose. Cowboys have it. Tobert. That, that Cowboy defense is making things happen today. I mean, they're going there and they're and they're getting interceptions and they're and then when they do catch them, they're 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 causing fumbles. You know, it's funny, you were saying that the other guy's pretty good, too. The other guy, Troy Aikman, was telling us that when he was a young quarterback, the guy that he used to watch the most was Dan, was Marino. Dan Marino. And I said, well, what did you what did you like about him? He said, well, he always had an edge. I'm not sure if that's Troy's number one goal in life is <laughs> to have an edge. To have an edge or to get an edge. But I feel in the last year or two that Troy Aikman has an edge now that he didn't have three or four years ago. First and ten, Aikman remains the quarterback. And the handoff is to Sherman Williams. Shane Burton made the stop. Now the question you asked earlier, would the would, would the Cowboys run it up on the Dolphins and Jimmy Johnson? I don't I don't think so. I mean, I don't think that Barry Switzer, I don't think that Ernie Zampezi was calling the plays. I don't think that they would do something like that. Well, you know, the stock answer this week has been from Barry. When I had the better players, I won. When Jimmy got the better players, when he came to Miami in college, he won. And I think that's why Barry said it's a no-win situation for him. If the Cowboys win, they're going to say, well, you had the best players you should have. And if they lose, they're going to say you're out coached by Jimmy. To Herschel Walker. And they wrestle him backwards. Now, if Jerry Jones were down there on the field, you think if he were Jerry coaching, Jones were calling the plays, then it might be a different situation. Well, I think Jerry's on the way. He's left the booth. Yeah, and you know, and he was saying that you know it doesn't mean anything. It's just another game. And Jimmy was saying it's just another game. I'll guarantee you it wasn't just another game. I don't remember Jerry ever saying it was just a game. Yeah, well, he was trying to he was trying to blow ball it this week. <laughs> Everybody, uh, all three of them have yeah, been trying to. I know it, but it doesn't make any difference. Once the game starts, you got to go play. It doesn't make any difference what you said during the week. When does it make a difference in the fourth quarter, what someone said? I think that's a Not a any. Aikman, pass complete to Kelvin Martin. Charles Haley, who started the game, played sparingly. Well, you know, he did practice on Thursday, and, and what they did is as they said he didn't practice in pads and they kind of fooled the media they brought him out there without any pads then the media was out there and they take the picture and the boom 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 then the media leaves Charles puts on his pads and he practiced the whole practice they fooled him they pulled one <laughs> over on the media once in a while you got to keep him on edge yeah what's Michael Irvin doing out here on one knee what's that what was that he's tired he has Williams 
<laughs> I think he's tired. Yeah, he just got down there, came out to his position, took a knee, and the ball was snapped, and he didn't move. Safe to say he's weary. I've never seen this before. Watch. Watch. I mean, <laughs> that's that's a way. <laughs> he just kind of waved it off. What the heck is that? <laughs> that's I guess, uh, that's a coach's stance. I guess when you're 29 to 10, they don't Damn. need you. There he goes to a chorus of booze. <laughs> Cowboy fans, they're everywhere. That's Sherman Williams again, bouncing off people. There's the guy who was concerned about, so concerned about last week, Mark Tuaday. Two-minute warning as the Cowboys are down inside the Dolphin 10. 29 to 10, they lead the Miami Dolphin. Dallas 29, Miami 10, fourth quarter, two minutes left. Pat Summerall with John Madden, Barry Switzer, and Jerry Jones enjoying the score. You know, Barry Switzer was saying something to Jason Garrett, who's talking to Ernie Zampezi up in the booth, as to what to do here. I don't think that he wants to pass. Yep, that's what he was telling him to do. Yeah. He just wants him to kneel down. You know, we were talking about that. You know, do they run the score up? Do they try and get another one? I think Barry Switzer was very emphatic when he went over to Jason Garrett to tell Ernie don't call any more plays. I think Jimmy's not still not all that happy about what's going on. No, no. I mean it's still I mean 29 to 10 rubs it in. I mean losing is tough enough as Jimmy said when he was out for those two years he said he missed the low of losing and yep. the high of winning and he said that even the low of losing is better than being in the middle. Third and five, and Aikman takes a knee. But I don't know that he wants this low of losing. There's a guy who had a big day, especially in the second half. Big year. But look at these guys. I mean, these are the guys that get paid all the money to do it. Troy Aikman, 33 for 41, three TDs. Michael Irvin had 12 catches 186 yards and then over here Emmett Smith rushes for 22 uh, rushes for 74 yards and one touchdown. Bjornsson had the other touchdown three field goals by Bono and again the Cowboys let it run the Dolphins don't use a timeout. So now we've got winning and losing. Winners get to brag and losers have to take it. There's a guy who had another big day too. Tony Tolbert. And he left it out here in the field. I mean these are a bunch of tired Cowboys. Bunch of tired Dolphins also. Forty seconds. Remaining. Troy Aikman was talking about this very thing. Aikman has three Super Bowl wins. Marino has none. But he has 27 NFL records. And Which I, would you rather have? I don't know. I mean, well, this this is the one that anyone would take. I mean, that's that's the ultimate. Uh, you know, to to get to the championship, to be a, a champion, and that was what Dan Marino said when Jimmy Johnson came down here. Someone said, "Well, Jimmy's going to run. It's going to be defense." Dan Marino said, "I don't care. I have all the numbers. Now I want a Super Bowl. I want a championship." This is Craig Erickson at quarterback now in place of Marino. Here comes Switzer. Let's see. They shook hands. That well, they slapped him on the back. They exchanged greetings at least. There's a melee out on that field. Yeah. There, there's more press and cameras and camera people out there than I've ever seen. Has the Jimmy Cam got Jimmy? Look at this. I mean, this is like a Super Bowl post game. Like the World Series was last night. Aikman and Marino, there's the two we were talking about. The two, certainly. One is all the credentials to be great, and so does the other. And Barry Switzer heads for the locker room. Another who has great credentials, and another. Final score, the Dallas Cowboys 29, Miami 10. And here is today's Miller Lite play of the game. 
Aikman to a wide open Michael Irvin. Well, Michael Irvin runs the out there. Terrell Buckley takes the bite on the out. Then Michael Irvin goes up and there is no one around him. How often do you see no one else in the picture even. Well, I think that was because of the move, and then I think that you know, poor Terrell Buckley just got caught. He couldn't believe what happened, and he just stood there and watched the whole thing happen. So for John Madden, I'm Pat Summerall saying so long from Miami, where the final score was Dallas 29, Miami 10. We'll send you back to the Fox Television Center and James Brown with some final thoughts after these messages.